After filing for bankruptcy in July, Detroit now has a plan to fix its $18 billion financial crisis. But the plan, proposed yesterday by the city's state-appointed emergency manager, faces some strong opposition. Matthew Dolan is a reporter for the Wall Street Journal. Journal rather. He joins us from Detroit this morning. Good morning to you, Matthew. Good morning to you. Though this is a huge plan. I mean, it's 440 pages, so I'm not going to ask you to summarize all of it. But what are some of the key <laughs> points of it all? Well, the key points, as you mentioned, is that the city has uh, approximately $18 billion in long-term obligations and has said that it really had little or no way to be able to pay that back. And some of those debts include a variety of creditors. So it's to bondholders, but it's also to pension holders and to uh, unions. And so the city has said that they're going to attack the debt in several different ways. Certainly, they're going to pay back what's known as secured creditors completely. Uh, they are going to pay back their union obligations through pensions partially, and then they're going to give a pretty severe haircut to some unsecured bondholders, less than uh, tw or about 20 cents on the dollar approximately. Matthew, obviously the unions had a lot of concerns about, about how hard the pensions would be hit. I mean, how big a cut are we talking about? That's right. They had feared pretty severe cuts, and there's a lot of debate about what the shortfall in the pensions actually are. But that said, the city has come out and said that they see a pretty uh, good recovery when it comes to the pension funds. For uh, police and firefighters, they expect a more than 90 percent recovery in terms of the amount that they say is owed. And for other workers, it could be in, uh, in excess of 70 percent. That said, uh, the unions and the pension funds themselves say that the state constitution protects them from any cuts to their future pension payments. So often when people mention Detroit, they talk about the blight. They say this is a city that has high crime and high violence because simply there's so many abandoned buildings. What are they going to do to fix that problem? That's a great question, and that is key, a key part of the plan. What the city and the governor uh, have said is that uh, the city really can't move forward out of a Chapter 9 municipal bankruptcy unless it has a plan to move forward, a way to reinvest in the city. And so that they said that through uh, cost savings that comes from cutting the debt and other types of financing, they'll be able to reinvest $1.5 billion in the city over the next 10 years. And a large chunk of that money, $500 million, will be spent on blight removal. And you have to remember that blight removal isn't just about tearing down houses. It's about making neighborhoods cleaner and safer and city services to run more efficiently so they won't have to be attending to the kinds of arsons and other, public, and other crime that that come to some of these abandoned structures. Matthew, what was, uh, there was a lot of concern about the city's art collection and the fate of that. What do we, what do we know is going to happen to that in this plan? Absolutely. The Detroit Institute of Arts is a city-owned museum. That means that the collection is owned by the residents of Detroit. And so the federal mediator in this case, uh, Judge Gerald Rosen, has come up with somewhat, I uh, would say, an innovative solution. And that innovative solution is to monetize the art collection by placing it into a nonprofit, essentially selling the art collection and using those proceeds to help pay down the pensions. And what that would do is achieve two solutions for the city that have been among its most vexing problems, protecting the art for the residents and, and the visitors to Detroit, as well as helping to make whole, at least to some measure, the pension holders, many of whom are on fixed incomes. All right. Matthew Dolan in Detroit. Thank you very much, Matthew.